Thank you. Good morning. Well, we are going through the Minor Prophets, and, you know, I don't know why, but God has segued us into a discussion on the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Last week, we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and now we are going to go into a series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe that in the days in which we live, Christians that are living without the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives are going to fail. How many of you like superheroes? You know, you ever watch Superman or Batman? You know, Batman was kind of cool because he was just a man, but boy, he could do some superhero kind of stuff. You know, and I know that the moment I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I began to experience supernatural power in my life. God would speak to me. He would give me wisdom beyond my years. I would be talking to people and God would tell me things about their life. I would pray for people and see them get healed. I've seen God do amazing things. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You will receive dunamis in the Greek. It's where we get the word dynamite. It is that incredible power of God that God desires to give to each and every one of us. No longer trying to struggle through life in our flesh. Trying to live our Christian life without the power of God. And I can assure you, if that's you, you're miserable. Because the tug of the world is still more powerful than the draw of God in your life. But once you've experienced the power of God and set at the foot of the cross and experienced that intimate communion with God, there is nothing that compares in this life. You desire nothing more than to spend time with the Lord. Do you have that power? Last week we talked about it. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. We know that the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every Christian until the rapture of the church. We know that. How do we know it? Acts 2 38. Peter said to them, repent, repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, the promise of the Father is what it's called, is for you and your children and all who are afar off, that includes you and I, as many as the Lord our God calls to Himself. Folks, if you've been struggling in your walk with the Lord, this ongoing filling of the Holy Spirit is what we need. And it's not the over-emotional, wacky stuff that we see on Channel 4. It is an empowering that brings clarity of mind. I remember when I was fully baptized in the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, rather than losing control and getting all weird like the people do and all this stuff, I had this clarity and this connection with God that I had never had. From that moment on, I walked in the power of the Lord. And I could tell days when I walked in my flesh, because my Christian walk was a struggle, the fruit of the Holy Spirit were hard to find. But when I walk with God and start my day, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. May rivers of living water well up within my heart and my soul and pour out to those that I meet. When I do that, I walk through that day strengthened and empowered like a superhero. I love that. You know you're indestructible until the very moment when God knows you're going home, you're going to go home. You're indestructible until then. I've told you this story about how my car went through a policeman and another car in the crash. You know, it, it was like dematerialized, and I was skidding. There was an accident, a cop with a flare, and I was speeding, sorry, coming up on this windy mountain road. Went right through him. I mean, the, somehow the flare went right, it didn't even touch him. My skid marks went right through the accidents. <laughs> there are so many Christians trying to live their life in the flesh and trying to do religious duty to God, thinking that maybe they'll earn the blessings of God when all they need to do is tap into that power source, the Holy Spirit. I really believe that God has so put this on my heart with an urgency to teach this message. 
and an urgency that we need right now at this time as Christians, the empowering of the Holy Spirit more than ever. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift. That's written to the church of Corinth. But folks, those people that say that's written to them, it doesn't apply to us. I don't know what hermeneutic, the science of interpreting scripture they're utilizing, but I can assure you folks, that is bad scriptural interpretation. The gifts of the Spirit are still for you and I today. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. For this reason, it says 14 through 20 if you're taking notes. Awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time for the days are evil. And folks, the days are getting eviler and eviler around us. <laughs> Is that a word? Uh, who cares if I use proper English? <laughs> I guess the, the uh, uh, thing passed in California for now, they're going to teach the history of homosexuality to our little kids. Now, Folks, you know, well, anyway. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, i got to tell you this. The whole spiritual drunkenness, you never find that in Scripture. In fact, the fruit of the Spirit, is, one of them is what? Self-control. So the moment... Christians say, oh, I'm so, ooh, and they're, you know, starting to bark and all of that. I, I, I am very cautioned about that kind of thing because I don't find it in Scripture except in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we know Saul was walking along and he came across this group of prophets and the Spirit of God fell on him and he fell down, right, and began to prophesy and he couldn't stop prophesying. But that was the Old Testament. In the New Testament, when the Holy Spirit filled people, it gave them one of the things, self-control. Yeah, many would speak in tongues. Not all. But we don't find a lot of the manifestations of the Spirit that are happening in the church today in Scripture. Not at all. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Don't you love that? Do you ever wake up with a song on your heart to the Lord? <coughs> Praise song? Those are the best days that I have. <laughs> Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are to walk in victory, we must continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then you're doing it by the power of God. Number one, A, the, the believer has three significant encounters with the Holy Spirit. And all help us achieve His purpose and plan. First, we're born of the Spirit. That's born again. Last week, we saw when the disciples received the Holy Spirit after Christ resurrected. And He breathed in them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. At that moment, they were born again. They believed they were born of the Spirit. In fact, their bodies became the temple of the Holy Spirit. At that moment, the fruit of the Holy Spirit began to be evident in their life, but they had not yet received the baptism or the empowering or the infilling of the Holy Spirit. To be born again, to be born of the Spirit, it's necessary for entrance into the kingdom of God, John 3, 5. It's associated with a new birth or new spiritual life, John 3, 3. You can just read all of it. It occurs when we repent from our sins and acknowledge Lordship of Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 8 through 13. By the way, that passage is probably a better thing to lead people in when they when you lead them to the Lord rather than just the sinner's prayer. Romans 8 or 10, 8 through 13. In the Holy Spirit, our human spirit becomes alive. You know we're spiritually dead until we're born again. Most people around you that have not embraced Jesus Christ are spiritually dead. Though they walk in the flesh, their spirits are still dead. But when you're born again, you become alive in Christ. Isn't that what the Bible says? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. 
Your body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. 6, 17, 2 Corinthians 6, 16. The evidence that we have been born again in the Spirit is the inner witness of the Spirit that we're children of God, Romans 8, 16. And the passage I read this morning in Romans chapter 8. Folks, don't let the enemy lie to you and say, well, you're really not saved. God really doesn't love you. You're too bad. You failed too many times. All you have to do is turn to the Lord. Run to the Lord and He will strengthen and empower you. The outcome of the fruit, the experience of the fruit of the Spirit functioning in our lives, being born in the Spirit, primary it, it is taking on the character of Christ. The believers to be baptized in the Spirit. Luke 3, 16, Acts 1, 5. That's where we experience the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It's an ongoing process. It's being filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18, 18 and 19. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. We need it. Being filled is a command. Being filled is continual. There's days I start the morning out right. I told you this. Someone cuts me off and I'm in the flesh. I need a, oh Lord, forgive me. Fill me again. Fill me fresh. Fill me new. Continually fill me up with your spirit. Oh, it uh, really parallels the oil in relation to the lampstands of the tabernacle and the parable of the ten virgins. In the last days, there's going to be uh, two groups of Christians. The five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. They all have lamps lit and they're all doing what? Wait. Waiting for Jesus to come. But half of them aren't going to make it because they don't have the extra oil. And folks, that extra oil is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For those churches that deny the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I don't know how they even function. You see, I'm so dependent on the empowering of the Holy Spirit that I could not do anything apart from Him. Some churches, those in the flesh that deny the empowering of the Holy Spirit, will talk about your shape. Hey, whatever natural abilities you have, those are your gifts. I can assure you that I cannot speak in public. Let me give you an example. I was at a meeting this past week. I can't. I cannot public speak. In the meeting, they had everyone just stand up and say their name and what agency they represented. And I got to tell you, there, there was, it got around to three people from me. I was shaking. I couldn't breathe. Just to stand up and say my name. I've told you before, I cannot public speak. It scares me to death. But through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, even when I'm sitting there, I, I'm like, Lord, find another guy. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. But when I get up here, something happens, the empowering of the Spirit, because I do not have a natural ability to speak in public. I do not. That's the empowering and gifting of the Holy Spirit. I can do things that I couldn't normally do according to the need of the moment. Does that make sense? I told you when I was an intern pastor way back in 1983, and the choir director resigned the church. And they had a choir. And the senior pastor said, you're directing the choir. Yeah, you, you play trumpet, right? You know music. You're directing the choir. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, I've never done it. So we, he prayed, laid hands, and said, Lord, just anoint him and give him the ability to direct this choir for your glory. All of a sudden, I could sing every part. You know, I could do the baton thing. I, I, I directed the choir. I didn't have a natural ability to do that, but God, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, gave me the ability. Just like getting up here and preaching. I cannot do it in my flesh, but in the Spirit and the empowering of the Spirit, I can. Those five wise virgins had the extra oil. I believe it's the infilling of the Spirit. They are the ones that went in. They are the ones that went to the wedding feast. The five foolish that did not have the extra oil. Though their lamps were lit 
and they were waiting for Jesus to come. So they were in the church. They didn't make it because they denied the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Folks, I don't know about you, but that scares me because I'm going to give you a statistic. Statistic. Stati I have a speech impediment too. So, <laughs> statistic. There we go. Uh, later, and it's going to shock you. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is meant to be an ongoing experience. You're either a carnal Christian or a spirit-filled Christian, plain and simple. There is no middle ground. You are either in the flesh, doing everything by your own natural ability, your own intellect, and there are pastors out there that they are charismatic, natural speakers. I mean, they can get up and swoon an audience and manipulate emotionally and get laughter and tears, and they, they craft these human wisdom messages in order to... I remember when I first graduated seminary. That's how they teach you to preach, by the way, in seminary. I remember when God finally took all that pride out of my life and made me lose everything. And I ended up living in a car and eventually on a boat for two years by myself. And he said, are, are, are you going to just craft things in your own intellect and own flesh? Or are you going to let me speak through you? And when you stand in the pulpit, it better be my message or you don't preach. Anyone who denies the filling and the gifting of God's Spirit is a fleshly, carnal Christian living their life in the flesh. Being filled with the Spirit has a primary focus of giving us fuel for long-term endurance. You know what I mean? When I'm filled with the Spirit, I don't care what challenge I face that day. I, 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 it doesn't even faze me. I have strength for today and hope for tomorrow. I have a vision. I have an empowering. Nothing can touch me. I feel like Superman. <laughs> Oh, uh, in Bible college and seminary, there was a bunch of us. We all got Superman t-shirts. And we were committed to being perfect. You know, I told you I went through a phase where I believed that we could be sinless in this life. Did I tell you that? So there was a season in Bible college where we made a covenant that we were not going to sin. <laughs> and we wore Superman shirts, and we just thought we were God's gift to mankind. <laughs> you know? Boy, pride cometh before a fall, doesn't it? We need to be filled with the Spirit in order to walk in complete victory. Jude 119, speaking of carnal Christians, these are the ones who cause divisions. Worldly minded, what's their quality? Devoid of the Spirit. That's every church that denies the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in what? The Holy Spirit, that's a command to all of us. Now, we know that not everyone will speak in tongues. Paul asked the question, do all speak in tongues? The uh, inevitable answer, it, it's a negative part of, I forget the whole Greek, whatever, but it means no. <laughs> not everyone speaks in tongues. You may have another gift. The routines of life can drain us of spiritual vitality and energy. Have you ever felt that? Just drain you come to church and you're trying to worship God and it just there's no connection. That's why we need the ongoing filling and empowering of the Holy Spirit. The attacks of the enemy can deplete us. Special challenges of each day can blindside us. The opposition from unbelievers can discourage us. Living in America today can discourage us. There are many marks of a believer who's been filled with the Spirit. First, you're going to have great boldness in your witness. Acts 4.31, Acts 11.24. That's one of the main reasons we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, to go out and make disciples. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive power to be my witnesses. Now, i got to tell you, I am scared to death to this day every time I go up to someone to witness. I don't know why. You know, some of you, 
Uh, you've got that boldness more than I, but and I do it all the time. But it's like, I'll get that prompting. Go talk to that person over there. And I'm like, oh, oh Lord, I'm pretty busy right now. You know, uh, can you find another Christian to talk to him? And okay. And I go up and I still have that. You know Bill Bright, Campus Crusade for Christ? Hey, you read his book. To this day, he still, well, back then, was scared to death every time he witnessed. So the boldness is to step out in faith and do it despite your fear. Are you with me? It doesn't say you're not going to be afraid to witness. But it says, don't worry. I'm going to give you the words to say. I'm going to empower you. Yesterday morning, Cheryl was doing a garage sale. She was a garage sale. Queen. And here come a whole group of Jehovah Witnesses. And I'm like... Lord, no. I gotta study. I, you know, I, I gotta lock myself in my garage and pray because we have to get to the beach. So, I, Lord, I don't have time for Jehovah's Witnesses, you know. And uh, they walked up, and there was a bunch of people in the garage cell, and I'm like, and the Lord just said, "Okay, you gotta do it." So, uh, but, hey, how you doing? Have you ever seen? Watchtower, you know? And I said, yeah, I've seen it. And you're a cult because you deny the deity of Jesus Christ. God just began. He said, just hit him sharp, you know, right in the nose. <laughs> For 45 minutes, we discussed theology in front of this great group of people and neighbors. And I was loud. I told you before, when they come, I'm the, okay, I'm going to do it out in the, in the alley of our condo, and I'm going to talk loud. So everyone hears. And uh, the Lord spoke through me and brought me to verses that I hadn't even thought of to speak to Jehovah's Witnesses. And when they went to a verse, I, I mean, it was, it was powerful. It was powerful only because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't do it in my flesh. I could not. I would not. There's going to be a heightened sensitivity to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Folks, here's what I know about the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Some people say, okay, I have the gift of healing, and that's my only gift. So then they try to be a faith healer. Okay, I don't believe that. I, I really don't. Why? What office gifts are there? We're going, to, we're going to get there next week. But there's not an office of faith healer. There's not. It, it is not an office gift. It is a gift for all of us at, according to the need of the moment. If it's God's will for someone to get healed, I can assure you when you pray for them and believe, they're going to get healed. No, no doubt. If it's God's will. Because anything we ask according to the will of God, what? What does the Bible say? Shall be done. Yeah, will be done. If it's not God's will for them to get healed, guess what? I don't care if you think you're a faith healer or, or not. They're not going to get healed because it's not God's will. <laughs> so every need that arises before my eyes, I ask God to fill me with the Spirit and give me the gift to meet that need. Does that make sense? Maybe someone needs a word of encouragement. Guess what? That is a gift. Exhortation. That is a gift. A word of knowledge. That is a gift. Word of wisdom, that is a gift. God will give you the verse, the story. Maybe you're going to say something. It's like, why did I share that with them? All of a sudden, tears get in their eyes. I'm like, oh, wow, I needed to hear that. Because God, what, gifted you and spoke through you to minister to that person. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are all about ministering to others. They're not about personal power. Does that make sense? It's all about bringing glory to God because you say, I can't do it. Great sermon, Pastor. Well, thank you. Yes, I went to seminary and I craft pretty good sermons. Are you kidding me? It's not my message. Thank God. I'm just the cup. He fills me up and I pour it out. That's all I am. He gets the glory for anything good in my life. That's the empowering of the Holy Spirit. There's a fuller release of encouragement from you to others. All of a sudden, if you know anyone that's so filled with the fr fruit of the Spirit that you talk to them, you know you're going to be encouraged. You know what I mean? There's other people, 
they're they're on the phone and you're like, oh, I, I don't want to talk to them right now. You know? And there's other people you talk to and there's a mutual encouragement that takes place. You're blessed. The fruit of the Holy Spirit and the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that's going to happen. You're going to have greater effectiveness in everything you do. And there's going to be a greater freedom and liberty in the Holy Spirit, more authority to challenge the works of darkness. And when you speak, you will speak with authority because God's power is in you and flowing out of you. Christians need to speak with authority. Now, well, I can't believe that you know Jesus is the only way. Wow, you intolerant bigot. Well, let me tell you, I know that Jesus Christ is the only way. And let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is going to knock on the door of your heart tonight. You can cuss me out. You can reject Jesus Christ. You can reject me. I don't care. But God Himself is going to knock on the door of your heart tonight. And I speak with authority to these people. Do not be intimidated. That's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. There is a greater ease in fulfilling Christian obligations. Acts 7, 55 through 60, and there are so many others. The fruit of the Spirit will be accentuated in your life when you're empowered by the Spirit. When you're baptized and filled with the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit become evident in your life. Being filled with the Spirit allows you to hear the still, small voice of the Lord. Uh-oh. That went black. Should have been white. John 10, 27. You probably can't see it. No. Nope. <laughs> God is speaking, oh, God is a speaking God, and He still speaks today. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. The empowering of the Holy Spirit allows us to hear the still small voice and the leading and guiding of the Spirit in our lives. Oh, there it went. We truly become His hands and feet extended as we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, on the last day of the feast, stood up and said, Come to me and drink, and out of your most innermost being will flow rivers of living water. What's he talking about there? The next verse, he said, parenthetical, John wrote, and this he spoke of the Holy Spirit. That's the rivers of living water. That's the empowering of God. I have felt God's power before. I felt when I prayed for people, I felt His power. There's other times we had a short in our mic. I told you this story once too in the first church I was in. <laughs> and, and if you held it just right to touch somebody, you got a little zzz. <laughs> it was kind of fun. Anyway, <laughs> we need the gifts now more than ever. Uh, people would say, whoa, I felt it. And I, oh, that was a short, sorry. <laughs> First Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12.1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware or ignorant. Yet so many Christians today are just that. Even those that believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit never see them in operation in many churches. Thayer's definition there is to be ignorant, not to know, to not understand, unknown, to have no experiential knowledge of. Folks, this is a, a, a really an exhortation to you and I. Do not be ignorant about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're going to take the next, I'm, I'm thinking four Sundays, to talk about the gifts and the empowering of the Holy Spirit so that we fully understand how they should be in operation. And what God intended. Only what the Bible says. What are the gifts? The Bible gives us several lists. Now I can tell you right now. Depending on what commentary you go to. Some are going to say there's nine gifts. Some are going to say there's seven gifts. We're going to find there's 15 gifts. Okay. I don't think I found one commentary that says there's 15 gifts. I, I, I don't know why. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. But to each one, who does that include? All believers. All of us. To each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For one is given the word of wisdom through the, through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the effecting of miracles. What's that? We're going to go through these gifts and define them and see how they're in operation 
uh, in subsequent weeks. But let me tell you, one uh, works of miracles. Driving the church bus when I was a youth pastor, filled, I, I must add, about 45 kids in the bus. And uh, I see the gas gauge going down, and I know there's no way we're going to make it. Sure enough, we run out of gas. And so we're out there, and at first I'm panicked, and I'm like, Lord, and all the kids are there, and they're like, why don't you pray, Pastor Brett? You know, God will fill the tank. And I'm like, shut up. You know, and, you know it's like, what? we didn't have cell phones back then. You know, and the Holy Spirit, like, hit me in the stomach right when I said shut up. <coughs> and he's like, Pray. Lord, give us enough gas to get to the gas station. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, get in the bus, kids. We all prayed, and they all believed. I didn't. <laughs> and, and we get in there, and I turn the key, boom, starts right up. We make it to the gas station. Okay, I believe that is a miracle. Okay. <laughs> to another prophecy, to another distinguishing of spirits or discernment, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to who? Each one, all of us individually, just as he wills. There are seasons in my life where I will go a month without really experiencing uh, uh, overt expression of the gift of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'll pray for someone, I don't get anything. I, I'll, I'll, I, I'm just not feeling connected. doesn't mean you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Simply means it could be God's testing you. Hey, are you more concerned about your relationship with me or me giving you cool power through the Holy Spirit to do exploits? Oh yeah, I don't care about any of the gifts for I just want to know you, and I want to make you known. Does that make sense? When your heart's like that, that's when God begins to flow through you, and the power of the Holy Spirit becomes evident. Romans 12, 6. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each one of us is to exercise them accordingly. All of us. If prophecy, according to the, to the proportion of faith. If service or ministry, same word in the Greek, in his serving. Or he who teaches in his teaching. Or he who exhorts in his exhortation. Or he who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. 1 Peter 4.10. Each one has received a special gift. Who? Each one. Very important. Employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the oracles or utterances of God. Whoever serves or ministers is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies. So that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. The gifting of the Holy Spirit is not to say, well, I'm an apostle. I'm a healer. I, I, you should see what I did. Are you kidding me? Well, I prayed for them and they were healed. Ooh. All right. God gets the glory. God gets the glory. You know what the greatest thing? One time God said, pray. We were at a hospital and the Lord said, pray, they're going to get healed. I knew it. I, I mean, God spoke it clearly in my heart. So immediately I thought, wow, they're going to think I'm so great because they're going to get healed. And then, I, then the Lord was like, have them pray. You're not praying. I mean, it was really clear. And I'm like, I'm going to pray. And I knew they were going to get healed. And uh, I, it, it, it's that humble. You know what I mean? It's like it doesn't matter who prays. God healed them. Does that make sense? you. <laughs> God is the healer. He gets the glory, and that is the purpose of the gift. So all these passages we just read, we have two minutes. Hang in here. There's 15 gifts mentioned. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, interpretation of tongues, service or ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, and mercy. Those were all listed in the passages that we just read. 
15 gifts. We're going to go over these gifts. Here's what I know. All of these things up there right now, all of us in this room, according to the need of the moment, God can give you to utilize you to minister to someone else. Remember, it's not about personal power or glory. It's about serving others, ministering to others, giving to others, and giving God the glory. It's about knowing God and making Him known. 1 Corinthians 1, 6 and 7. One minute. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you what? Wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who's that talking to? The church of the last days. The church that's here waiting for the rapture of the church. You and I, folks. But are the church lacking in the spiritual gifts? Absolutely. And many churches deny the gifts. Especially the sign gifts. I love when I talk to those pastors. Well, how in the world do you preach if you deny the sign gifts? If you deny the gift of prophecy, how do you teach it? Because prophecy, by very definition, is foretelling the Word of God, declaring the Word of God. You cannot preach without the gift of prophecy. It is impossible. You can't do it. If you do preach without the gift of prophecy, you are... You may be extremely intellectual and charismatic. And you study this book in your flesh and you know it better than I. Because there's scholars that know this book better than I. That can write fluently. That can speak charismatically. That can craft in their own flesh awesome sermons. That I will say amen to. But it's still in the flesh. They tend to get the glory. What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, who? Each one of us here has a psalm, a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Let's go to the end of the chapter and put it in context. Verse 37. If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize the things which I write to you are whose command? The Lord's command to you and I still today. It's not Paul's idea. But if anyone does not recognize this, he's not to be recognized. Folks, the, the Christian men that you put on a pedestal that deny the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they're not even to be recognized. In Timothy, we're told, in the last days there'll be men who hold to a form of godliness but deny the power, avoid such men as these, always learning... They're intellectual, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Avoid such men as these. By the way, this passage also talks about the gifts of the Spirit utilized in a proper manner in the church. So the churches that do not obey that, and they're all speaking in tongues and going crazy, they're not to be recognized because they're not obedient to the Word of God. Churches seem to either neglect, forbid, or abuse the gifts. We need to practice them in a biblical manner. 1 Timothy 4.14 Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through the prophetic utterance and laying on of hands of the elders. 2 Timothy 3.5 Talking about those men that deny the gifts, holding to a form of godliness in their flesh, carnal Christians, although they've denied its power, the empowering of the Spirit, Avoid such men as these, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Barna did a survey in 2009. Here's the stat I told you. Sorry, I'm going over. Give me three more minutes. How about that? Only 13% of Christian adults in 2009 have an expression of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in their life, according to their survey. 13%. That's not very much. And I can assure you, of that 
A majority of them are going to churches that abuse the gifts and have all this weird stuff going on. So how many Christians do you think are operating the gifts of the Spirit the way God has intended? Folks, the number goes down to a very few. Verse 74.10, as each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another. That should be every Christian, 100%. And only 13% of those surveyed by Barna, which is a respected surveyor, have the operation of the gifts of the Spirit in their life. And a majority of those abuse the gifts and do all this weird stuff. Eighty-seven percent of Christians are out of line, according to Barnes Survey. I would say it's even higher. Ephesians four thirty: Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. First Thessalonians five nineteen: Do not quench the Spirit. First Corinthians fourteen thirty nine. Therefore, my brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid the speaking of tongues. Will not have speaking of tongues in this church. It's demonic or delusional. Well, yeah, the way most churches practice it today, it is probably demonic or delusional. But folks, it's a valid gift if it's utilized correctly. 1 Thessalonians 5.20 Do not despise prophetic utterances. The gifts will not cease until Jesus comes and we see Him face to face. It's very clear. Read 1 Corinthians 13.8-12. We read it last week. That's the verse that cessationists, those that believe the sign gifts have ceased, it's the only verse they can go to. But they forget to put it in context. They say, will there tongues? They'll cease. Prophecy, they'll cease. When the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. But you go one more verse and it says, then when the partial's done away with, those gifts are done away, we'll see them face to face. It's the rapture of the church when we don't need the gifts anymore. Come on up, dude. This morning we need that extra oil. I don't know about you, I want to be one of the five wise people waiting for the coming of the Messiah. That have the extra oil. That are ready to endure until the midnight hour. How do you get that? You just ask. It's so clear. Matthew 5, 7 through 9. For what man among there is you who if the son asks for a loaf, he'll give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask? What is good? Luke 11 tells the same story. He clarifies it. That's why we have four Gospels. You cross-reference to get the full picture of what God was really trying to say. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We need the empowering of the Spirit. We need to know about the gifts of the Spirit. For God's glory to build His kingdom. What about that 87, 90% of the Christians that either don't believe in the gifts or, or don't know what they are, you know, even deny them? Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many through it that enter through it. Notice they've entered through the gate. Just a false gate. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and few there are that find it. Titus 3, 3. For we also were once foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But then the kindness of God... Our Savior and His love for mankind appeared. He saved us not on the basis of deeds which were done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, which He poured out upon us richly through Christ Jesus. That's what we need, folks. Next week, we're going to get into the gifts and kind of break them up. 
uh, and really define them and see what the Bible says about them. God bless you. Why don't we stand? And during this song, I want you to think about Acts 2.17, the first message delivered to the church. This is the first sermon preached to the church. And it's all about the last days. Guess what, folks? We're in the last days. It's all about the church that will be here and the empowering of the Spirit. Your young men will uh, dream dreams, see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh in those last days. And folks, we're living in those days. If you don't have it, simply ask. Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Work through me, God, for your glory. That's all you have to do. And He will. And you'll be empowered to serve Christ in these last days. What song are you going to do? Uh, can I request to see the last song? Okay. It says I'm going to start at I like that. All right, if you need prayer, the uh, elders will be back to pray with you. Sing this song and just ask the Lord to fill you. Amen. God bless you. Yeah.
He knows the very number of hairs on your head. And when one falls out, He knows how much more does He care for you. Every little thing, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to hold on to that this week. This week I am going to ask the Lord every morning, possibly before I get out of bed, Lord, fill me with your spirit, fresh in me. Let my life be pleasing to you. Let my words, Lord, 
He sees him with grace, as was Saul. Lord, use me today as an ambassador of your kingdom. Shine forth your love through me to those I need. May rivers of living water flow out of my heart to those around me. That's the empowering of the Spirit. For God's glory. Be blessed this week, and uh, we will see you next week. We don't have to pick up chairs. God bless.